With the rise of the Angry Earth expansion for New World, gearing is changing quite a bit. The Umbral Shard system, which we've had since like the beginning of 2022, and the Expertise or Watermark system, which we've had since the release of the game, are going away. And it's got a lot of people asking, what's going to happen with my gear? Can I take my existing gear from the live version of the game? Is it still going to be usable in the expansion? What's going to happen with Umbral Shards? What's going to happen with Gypsum? How do, you know, what do I need to do, Baggins, to sort of be prepared for the expansion? So in today's video, we're going to break it down sort of section by section you'll be able to scrub along um, at the bottom of the video and we'll explain basically what's going to be happening with this update so first things first umbral shards after the expansion arrives your umbral shards will become depleted umbral shard and effectively they're not really going to do anything other than sit there and wait to be salvaged so you can salvage one stack of umbral shards for a thousand gold so if you've stockpiled up a good amount of umbral shards then the good news is you are going to get at least a decent amount of gold out of it however i do believe there will be a good way to spend Umbral Shards before the expansion arrives. Now, fingers crossed that I'm organized and I've managed to get this video out before the expansion is here. And uh, we'll talk about the best way to use Umbral Shards at the end of the video. Now, as we mentioned, when you click on an item, there's no longer an upgrade option as, you know, as a result of Umbral Shards effectively being defunct. But there are still ways to upgrade certain items in the game. In order to do that, you're going to need to go to the Gypsum Kiln. Now, the Gypsum Kiln obviously exists in multiple uh, sort of areas in the game. Uh, any of the level 60 to 65 settlements has one of these bad boys. And if you open up the menu and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to find all of the named items that you currently have in your inventory. So for me, it's Passage of Time. Time, Genesis of Life and the Tangle Vine Crown. Now, if we take a quick look at these items, some of them are already legendary, even though they're only 617. Uh, so this one has Refreshing Toast, Healing Heart and Regenerating. So Genesis of Life. Funny enough, I believe this is an earring that comes from Garden of Genesis. If we take a look at the earring in the menu here, you can see that it's a 700 gear score in its upgrade option. It's not legendary, but that's because of the way that the, the crafting menu is displayed. So effectively, what you can do is you can take named items from the game, and it, they might have to be 650 or above. This might just be a bug on the test server. Um, but effectively, named items, you can take them to the gypsum kiln, and you can bump them all the way up to 700 gear score. One thing that's also cool about this as well is you can change the bottom perk. So you can see here, this has Healing Heart and Regenerating. Whereas if we take a look at my inventory, it has Healing Heart, Regenerating, and Refreshing Toast. So we can actually change this Refreshing Toast perk on my earring here. So all named items, effectively now, with, with maybe like a small exception, have two perks that are always fixed on them. So for this one, Refreshing and Stamina Recovery. For this one, it's Healing Heart and Regenerating. And for this one, it is Thrust Conditioning and Physical Aversion. And then we can add a third perk on or even change a third perk if the item already has three perks on it. Now, in the process of doing this, it also bumps it up to 700 gear score as well. In order to do this sort of transaction, you're going to need a Jewelry Matrix, some Dark Matter, and the Gypsum Orb. Now, this sort of answers that question about Gypsum and whether it's still useful. Yes, Gypsum Orbs are still very useful in the expansion. Uh, we're going to go over a few more uses for them but at the very least you're going to be spending gypsum orbs to sort of upgrade and change perks on named items now the next question that probably comes to mind is can i take my existing gear into this and can i upgrade that well as we showed uh previously anything that isn't a named item so crafted gear will not be upgradable so you can see that we don't get to see this prime primeval mithril ring of the soldier that does not pop up as an, an item that's upgradable in the gypsum kiln it has to be one of these sort of shine shiny named items usually they say named on them now you might be asking well baggins i do have some named items on the live version of the game i've got you know a bunch of items i've got the legates ring is a pretty popular one or the smooth bone ring or Simon's Hack Silver Ring, or Will of the Ancients. Because those items dropped before the expansion came out, they will not be upgradable. In some cases, you can still get those items, but you have to get them to drop again after the expansion comes out, if that makes sense. So any sort of legacy items that existed prior to the expansion will not show up and they will not be upgradable. So you will need to refarm and sort of earn higher gear score versions of some of the same items you might have. Although generally, a lot of the existing items in the game uh, no longer exist in the Rise of the Angry Earth expansion in that you have the old version, but there is no longer a new version of them. Now, whether that's something that you want to get upset or riled up about, I'm, I'm not going to touch that one. A lot of people say like, oh, is this your first MMO? Uh, this is pretty commonplace in a lot of the MMOs where it's out with the old, in with the new. Uh, but I just want to sort of break down and sort of hopefully answer a few questions about how upgrading works. So yes, you can upgrade, but it does have to be a named item and it has to be a named item that you acquire post Angry Earth 
uh, expansion, if that makes sense. Now, I thought one thing that might help as well with a little bit of a demonstration is actually changing or upgrading some of these items. So let's take a look at what we have in the inventory right now. We have Passage of Time with Shirking Dot Cleanse, Stamina Recovery, and Refreshing. I believe this is an amulet that might come from Tempest Heart or the Depths or something like that. Um, in fact, we should be able to find it real quick, and I think that will help us identify it, because you can also craft these items as well. It comes from Lazarus, apparently, uh, because it requires Lazarus materia. So if you were able to get the passage of time to drop in Lazarus, you would that you would then be able to take it into the Gypsum Kiln and uh, change some of the perks. So it looks like the fixed perks on this is always refreshing and stamina recovery. The one that we have in our inventory has refreshing, stamina recovery, and then shirking dot cleanse. Now I like to have health on my amulets, so what we can do is go down here, um, click on the passage of time, and then we can change that third perk to health. There we go. And then if we hit craft, also it will bump it up to 700 gear scar as well. So there it is, 700 health, stamina recovery, and refreshing. Pretty damn effective, getting a, you know, honestly, pretty close to Bastion Slot Amulet there just by changing one of the perks and bumping it up. Um, we'll also take a look at what happens with this one as well, because this is obviously a purple item, so physical aversion, thrust conditioning. Um, so let's take a look at that helmet there. So here it is, physical aversion, thrust conditioning, and then again, we can choose the third perk to put on it. Now, I sadly don't have a lot of the craft mods on me right now, um, but we can just slap refreshing in there, and we'll see the same thing happen again, where it goes all the way up to 700, and uh, I believe if we want to, we can change the perk again. Yeah, so we do have the option, the same item in your inventory. If you decide that you don't like refreshing and you want to put something else, you can go back to the gypsum kiln. Obviously, it's going to require the resources every time, but you can change the perk once more again, and it's still going to stay at 700. The reason why it shows as epic is because it's not showing the third perk in there, because the game doesn't know what perk you're wanting to put on it, if that makes sense. So hopefully that explains the upgrading and the gypsum sort of named items thing. Let's break down some of these materials and talk about about how you can acquire them. Now, gypsum orbs, you should already understand this. Uh, they're acquired from gypsum, which you can get right up at the top here. There's a bunch of different types of gypsum you can get in the game. Uh, there is some new ones as well. We get the spore craft now, but ruby comes from outpost rush, obviously, emerald from crafting, sapphire from, if you just hover over them, it tells you where you can get the, the gypsum from. And some of them, you can get a certain amount per day, and then you turn them into the orbs. Dark matter, now this is an interesting one. This is as it's a concentrated form of umbral that can be used in some artifact and named item crafting. Now this one is going to be acquired from a variety of different ways. You can get this from salvaging gear. We'll talk a little bit more about that again at the end of the video. You can also get it from quests. You can get it from the PVP rewards track, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is acquired in a multitude of different ways, but it is something that is used for a variety of different sort of gypsum kiln activities, and I believe some other crafted recipes as well. Finally, we have the matrixes. Now, these matrixes are going to require you to bump up your trade skill all the way to 250 in order to be able to unlock them. So if we go into jewel crafting, for example, and we go all the way down to the bottom, we do have the jewelry matrix there. So you can go to a jewel crafting or an outfitting station, and let's take a look at what's required to make a jewelry matrix. So I got it wrong. It turns out it is the stone cutter required to make a jewelry matrix and you need honing acid and blessed rivets. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you have to go to like different crafting stations to make these. So blessed rivets, for example, require prismatic ingot and prismatic block. This is basically like super asmodium and uh, super, what would it be, runestone effectively. Um, so these are the next tier up of asmodium, but they ha also have a limited cooldown. And then again, we need more gypsum orbs for this. We need some gemstone dust and we need Azoth, and that's just to make the rivets. The honing acid, on the other hand, I believe we make at the Arcana station, so we'll take a look at that. Yeah, and here is the honing acid. So again, we need like super runic leather and uh, more of this prismatic block. We also need infused alkahest and another five gypsum orbs. So making these materials, not super cheap. So the matrix is, you know, that could be something that you just sort of easily whip one out. They do require a bit of investment. However, the matrix is bind on equip, I believe. I think we should still have some in our inventory. So you can trade these to other players. So if you're not particularly interested in the crafting aspect of New World for whatever reason, then you can buy these off of other players and off the trading post, but I do imagine they're probably going to be quite expensive. One thing that's interesting is you can make the matrix at the Arcana station as well. So the jewelry matrix, we make it at the stone cutter, but we can also make it at the Arcane repository. And the materials are slightly different. This one requires a tempered cast instead. So there are multiple different ways to go down to acquire the matrix 
pieces. Um, maybe the tempered cast is going to be a little bit easier to make than the blessed rivets. I'm going to assume this is probably made at the forge, but a, a full breakdown of, you know, each one of those, I think that is going to require a separate video, but that's sort of a little bit of a look at the matrix. They do require these components, which then require their own components as well. So not super cheap, uh, but you can trade for them. So you don't need to worry about getting to 250. Uh, that's not like that's the only way you can acquire them. Now, one of the things that we could do with the gypsum kiln with dark matter and gypsum orbs is related to the artifacts as well. So the artifact items, these are the new, unique, one-off, special, ultra-powerful items. Um, you can change the perk on artifacts as well. So these always exist at 700 gear score, but right down at the bottom again, we have artifact crafting. This again requires another matrix. It obviously requires the item a little bit more dark matter and five gypsum orbs. And what we can do with artifacts is effectively change one of the perks on them. So just like with the named items, artifacts always have the perk at the bottom this time, I believe is random. So keen, we can change this to something else. And the same with the wall over here. If we wanted to change fortifying shield rush to a different perk, we can do that. So you have to take the artifact in your inventory. It has to not be equipped to your character. Go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, we don't have the gypsum orbs anymore, sadly, and we can put one of these perks in place of that keen slot over there. So we can switch out keen to uh, trench and crits, for example. So again, more use for gypsum orbs and more of this dark matter that we need as well. So we covered the gypsum orbs, we covered the matrixes, and we sort of slightly covered the dark matter and some ways you can obtain it. But I did say towards the end of the video that we would cover umbral shards and some way that you can get some value out of them. Uh, before they get converted into depleted umbral shards. Now, we're not 100% sure if this is going to go down the way we think it is, because again, some things can change from live uh, between PTR and live, things can change. But it seems like what you could do with your umbral shards right now is upgrade some of your named items to legendary, because what we've observed so far on the test server is legendary items. Um, if they're from dungeons, they downgrade into materia, but legendary items that are not from dungeons, they give you fragments and they also do give you dark matter as well. So if you have any legendary items and i do believe it has to be named items as well although i think items from outpost rush caches do count they have to be above 600 gear score so they have the three perks on them and those should break down to give you um dark matter basically so anything you have from a dungeon you know the lazarus bow will of the ancients those aren't going to work so you don't need to upgrade those but if you do have a named item and you know that it doesn't come from a dungeon then that one is going to be worth upgrading to 600 gear score most likely because then you can salvage it and get some dark matter so i gotta jump in and interrupt myself in my own video here uh, because we have this updated information from the devs regarding upgraded named items with umbral shots i'm just going to read it out and then i'll extrapolate what it means if you're left scratching your head they say any named items that we have updated to you drop its gear score 625 post expansion will actually auto upgrade to gear score 625 in your inventory but note not all tier 5 named items will be upgraded to gear score 625 post expansion but most of the recent named tier 5s will so this it's getting kind of confusing honestly i'm trying to make sense of it as well uh, but you know that's what we do these videos for to try and break it down so to my understanding um, and I, i've started sort of compiling a storage set of items here we have certain items like uh, these ones here so these sort of shiny named items with it with the glowy treatment i believe these will auto upgrade so if you have a shiny named item with the glowy effect i think that is going to be an auto upgrade to 625 so you don't need to upgrade those um, however, there are some items that you can upgrade to 600 gear score that again, I don't think are going to get the auto upgrade treatment. And most of these come from outpost rush boxes. So if you guys do have any boxes of outpost rush loot, uh, when you pop them open, sadly, I opened them all before I recorded this, uh, you can actually click on the item. Um, so we have this Russia ice gauntlet here. We go to upgrade and then we upgrade it all the way up to 600 gear score. And uh, there you go, it becomes legendary. We're not gonna be able to do that after the expansion comes out. You Again, you won't be able to do any upgrading with Umbral Shards and you can't upgrade these items at the Gypsum Kiln. So I think the best treatment for Umbral Shards is actually upgrading items from uh, Outpost Rush Boxes, but also uh, major Breach Caches as well. So these Void Slayer, Gloves of the Warden, these Breaching Heavy Cleric Boots, I think most of these items as well so this one, again, in theory should, I'm just going to double check this real quick. And just in case any of you guys are curious, the way that I've been double checking is I go to New World Database and I type in the name of the item and I see if a gear score 625 version exists of it. If it does, 
then that seems to suggest that this will be an auto upgrade. But some of them, like our uh, recent life staff that we got, Oasis of Life, for example, is a good life staff that I've acquired recently. This only exists at 590, so this suggests that this one doesn't upgrade. So this one you will need to upgrade. I know, it's like... <laughs> I wanted to try and make sense of it for you guys. So um, hopefully you can understand the method and the madness here. So we don't upgrade this one, but this other item here, this Breach Closes Musket of the Nomad, because it came from a invasion cache i think we can upgrade it yeah and it becomes legendary and then in theory we can salvage that and get dark matter i don't know at which point i'm going to interject this in the video um, but that's what we're all coming down to here is you want to have these items and you want to have them at 600 gear score to have them become legendary now that one didn't become legendary holy flip uh but yeah you want it you want to be upgrading your items with these um umbral shards to have them become legendary because then we can salvage them post expansion and hopefully get uh, the dark matter. However, some of you might be asking, well, is this dark matter really going to be that difficult to acquire? And honestly, my evaluation is after two weeks, you probably will have quite a large amount of dark matter. But if you want to get ahead early, if you want to be ahead in the sort of first few days of the expansion, uh, then this is a strategy you can do. But if you're feeling a bit lazy or a bit overwhelmed by this, don't worry, just let your Umbral Shards sort of turn into the depleted Umbral Shards. You can salvage them into gold, and you're probably not going to be that far behind as well. Um, we'll probably cut back to Baggins of the Past now, but I did want to provide that update to you guys because it felt like it was important. So once again, uh, most of the shiny named items, those are going to auto-upgrade, so don't bother with those. But non-shiny named items, um, and, and also items from Outpost Rush Boxes and Invasions and Wars, uh, those you will want to upgrade to 600 to get the dark matter okay back to the video the act the video from the past All right i think that's enough information for one video uh, there are some other stuff with gypsum mobs that you can do as well like upgrading heart runes so upgrading a heart rune from 625 to 700 gear score requires 50 gypsum mobs so what, if nothing else to take away from this video, hold on to those gypsum mobs. Uh, don't spend them. Your current gear, none of it's going to be upgradable, but there is some value in upgrading non-dungeon named items to 600 because they will most likely give you dark matter. If you guys have any other further questions, make sure you hop in, in the stream. We'll, we'll be happy to answer those. We are streaming New World almost every day. Also, help each other in the comments down below if there's something that I missed in this video. If there's a new piece of information that comes out, um, feel free to share it in the comments. But yeah, hopefully this is answered some of those questions about New World's expansion. It seems a little bit confusing, but it, it, it'll make sense, you know, within like the first sort of 15 minutes of playing it is kind of how I feel about it. As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and click the like button, subscribe if you want to see more New World content here on the channel, and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.